moving on to the salivary gland disorder imaging. Um, imaging of the salivary glands is primarily done to diagnose and plan uh, management as well as follow up of patients um, having salivary gland disorders. There are various imaging techniques that have been adopted to visualize the salivary glands and we will go through each one of these in detail. The learning outcomes would be to list salivary gland diseases, imaging and its radiologic appearances and to discuss differential diagnosis of salivary gland diseases, silography procedure and silography techniques. The imaging modalities for salivary glands and their ducts are projection radiography which means plain radiographs, intraorally we can use occlusal views uh, for example to view the submandibular salivary gland and its duct and extra orally we can view the panero use the panoramic to view the submandibular salivary gland as well as uh, any pathosis within the parotid. Also high resolution ultrasonography, multi-detector computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, nuclear medicine, silography and endo silo endoscopy are all used. Each of these imaging modalities have their own advantages and indications uh, in the uh, pathology that we are seeing in the salivary gland. <clears throat> Let's talk about plain images first. These plain images, I mean um, plain radiographs. Um, generally, uh, you use intraoral occlusal views to view of when you are suspecting siloliths in the submandibular duct or panoramic view when you're expecting uh, siloliths in the parotid and submandibular gland. So mind you, there is a difference in what is written over here. Um, what you're seeing on this image is a cropped panoramic view, is a staphnase bone cavity. The reason I've mentioned this here is it's not true cyst. It's a corticated defect in the posterior mandible below the inferior dental canal, and it uh, may contain part of the submandibular gland. A silolith is a common um, occurrence in the submandibular salivary duct. Uh, we are aware of the reasons why the Wharton's duct is a more common location is because of its tortuous course and uh, uh, location of the duct and also the components of the saliva that is like, secreted by the submandibular salivary gland itself. So um, siloliths can vary in their radio opacification based on the calcification and the density. Uh, the x-ray that is shown here is a cross-sectional occlusal um, view of the mandible and you can see that there are few radio opacities in the salivary duct which is um, the proximal component of the duct very close to the orifice of the uh, duct. Ultrasonography, um, high resolution ultrasonography in specific is a very important method of imaging the salivary glands. Um, initial assessment of the parotid and submandibular salivary glands can be done with ultrasonography. Uh, it is useful for viewing superficial and abnormalities. Dif it is also useful for differentiating cysts from neoplasms and benign from malignant lesions. Uh, ultrasonography is also of use to guide biopsy and advise further imaging choices. Um, uh, the advantages of ultrasonography would be safety because it does not have any radiation involved. Again, uh, the salivary glands are easily accessible and any calcification within the gland can be noticed um, as well as uh, details of the uh, presence of the any uh, anomalies as well as a neoplasm can be noted down. So this is uh, an example of how the parotid uh, looks on um, ultrasonography. Um, and also color Doppler has been applied, which gives you a clear idea of how the facial artery and its branches appear and um, how the submandibular gland appears um, as well as uh, how the parotid appears on the uh, ultrasonography. Multi-detector computer tomography is uh, used to display uh, both soft and hard tissue windows. Um, to view the salivary glands and surrounding structures. 
uh, the image viewing after administration of contrast dye uh, gives an hyperdense appearance and is very useful in identifying and diagnosing inflammatory conditions, neoplasia and lymph node involvement. This is a case where you're seeing a plunging granula, which is a large space occupying mass seen on the floor of the mouth, it is a well circumscribed cystic lesion predominantly occupying the left submandibular space, causing a mass defect or effect on the uh, submandibular mandibular gland so you can see that the gland has been pushed to one corner and you can see a large ranula which is a plunging ranula uh, <clears throat> CT scan can also be uh, a scout image over which um, PET scans can be done this is an example of a squamous cell carcinoma involving the left uh, sublingual space and an axial contrast enhanced CT image shows homogeneity uh, along with the left sublingual space and in B this is an image of um, PET CT scan. Magnetic resonance imaging of salivary glands uh, would be the image of choice for space occupying lesions such as cysts and neoplasia. Uh, the soft tissue contrast is superior and intravenous gadolinum contrast agents have to be injected into the um, uh, intravenously so that you can observe perineural and intracranial spread of disease more clearly. This is the normal appearance of a sublingual and submandibular uh, uh, space and the appearance of the um, sublingual gland on MRI as well as the submandibular gland bilaterally on the MRI and this is just a diagrammatic representation of how the gland would look like on MRI. This is an example of an adenoid cystic carcinoma of the sublingual salivary gland. Uh, the, uh, this is the mask that you're able to see pointed with the white arrow mark. Um, the, this image in the sublingual space, it's demonstrating a lobulated um, <clears throat> mass, which is of a high T2 signal and a low T1 signal. It's actually enlarging and distorting the entire left sublingual gland. Also, there is a enhancement which is diffuse post-contrast. This is an image after the contrast dye has been applied. Nuclear medicine specifically is a very useful imaging modality to visualize functional examination of the salivary glands. The selective uptake of a specific radiopharmaceutical dye such as technetium pertectate is used uh, to be injected within the salivary duct. Uh, or glands. Uh, it is um, done by injecting it intravenously. This is followed by administration of a silagom to evaluate the secretory capacity of the salivary gland. So if there is a pathology within the uh, gland, uh, then it can be determined on the basis of variation, the rate of uh, uptake of the dye and, or the clearance of the dye. So, in other words, the patient is, uh, who is indicated for nuclear medicine scan um, is generally admitted to the uh, ward and intravenous injection is done in the radiology imaging, uh, <clears throat> imaging unit and uh, the uptake and the secretion is uh, measured and the functioning of the salivary gland is measured with the help of um, nuclear medicine. The scan, for example, in this picture demonstrates the uptake of the dye in the right parotid gland uh, in picture A, whereas in B, it shows that there is still remnants of the dye remaining after a silagogue has been used, which is considered as one of the typical presentations of a Warthin's neoplasm. Silography is a procedure that was first performed in 1902. It is an imaging technique exclusively used for the parotid and submandibular salivary glands. Silography involves infusion of the gland ductal system with an iodinated contrast agent and then uh, imaging the gland with uh, projection imaging that is plane radiographs, fluoroscopy, CT or CBCT. Silography is the only imaging technique that can assess both morphology and function of the glands at the same time and that's something very important and unique about silography. The indications for silography would be chronic inflammatory conditions like obstructions of the ductal system uh, and contraindications would be acute infections or in cases of immediately anticipated thyroid function test because the iodine, iodine in the contrast agent may interfere with test results.
this is how the silography procedure is performed for example uh, locating the uh, uh, stenson's duct opening and retrograde injection of the dye into the uh, ductal system so um, the example of radiographs taken after the dye is injected uh, this is how normal salivary, submandibular salivary ductal system uh, would look like, the normal ductal architecture. And this pattern is called as a leafless tree pattern in radiology terminology. Uh, the, if there are strictures in the ductal system, this can lead to the appearance which is called as sausage-like appearance. This happens because the dye hasn't flown consistently throughout the ductal system due to the presence of strictures. <clears throat> A silogram, a conventional silogram demonstrates multiple filling defects within the uh, Wharton's uh, duct in this uh, particular image here. Um, it, this is consistent with the presence of siloliths uh, because the silolith obstructs the duct and the dye cannot completely flow into the gland uh, smoothly. Now, this is another patient where you can see pre and post contrast injection silogram images which dis, uh, this is pre-contrast pre, um, injection, this is post-contrast injection and you it easily demonstrate where the obstruction of the uh, duct is happening is because of a large uh, silolith or a large stone. Silography in Jogren syndrome is a very important radiographic uh, feature. Uh, silectasis leads to branchless fruit laden tree appearance also called as a cherry blossom appearance. This happens because after the dye is injected it is retained in the inflamed um, salivary SNI because of silectasis and it is unable to um, uh, flush out the saliva and hence the dye remains there giving the appearance of uh, the cherry blossom or branchless fruit laden tree appearance. Here I have included various images in plain radiograph. This is a pa crop panoramic image and this is a lateral uh, skull view. This is images on a CT scan and this is on the um, image on a silography. So post silography, this is a fluoroscopy image um, and CT image and plain images done um, for after silography. So like I mentioned to you, after si injecting the dye, various methods of imaging can be done to view the uh, effects of the dye in the ductal system. This is the appearance again on a silogram or a si after silography of a normal submandibular salivary gland. You can see the uh, leafless tree appearance, the duct and its entire ductal system and the uh, branches. When there is a foreign body, you will definitely see that there is obstruction. Uh, if digital subtraction silography is performed, and uh, this would be the stages of the silography and you will be able to see the dye slowly filling out within the uh, ductal system and it completely fills out here. So this is the uh, injection of the uh, silography dye. Silo endoscopy was first used in 1990s. It is slightly different from silography. In, the, in silo endoscopy, as the name suggests, it is a direct visualization of the parotid and submandibular major ducts. It's minimally invasive. It's a technique uh, which is indicated for diagnosis and management of obstruction, specifically within the ductal system. And uh, silolith retrieval and stricture dilation tools are available because of which, which you can see in the picture here, which, where, which can help to retrieve uh, uh, especially an obstruction caused by stones within the ductal system. Again, siloendoscopy is contraindicated in acute inflammations. This is an example of exploration of the Wharton's duct. Uh, you can note the diameter of the duct and uh, it is sufficient for insertion of a surgical endoscope for interventional siloendoscopy. A lacrimal probe has been used in this duct for uh, correct location purpose and uh, it is important for you to note the uh, location of the endoscope for accurate insertion as well. So that is the end of this topic. Please uh, feel free to contact me if you have any doubts and for further reading please read the textbook uh, for better understanding.